You know, I saw this yesterday. I got a little sneak peek, and uh, it's probably one of the most clever shows I've ever seen. Um, you know, it's different, uh, but it's educational and a lot of fun. We've been working really hard, and our steam team, led by our amazing Janora Dupre, they have the <laughs> So we all kind of remember this about a year and a half now? About a year and a half. So uh, a lot of work to make this happen. And the Mon Love team uh, was phenomenal. Yay! Yay! <laughs> but this is really about inspiring those young space explorers. Uh, this new experience with the light guests of all ages, it features the lovable Peanuts characters and Snoopy. Say hi, Snoopy. <laughs> We have contributed to the excitement of NASA human space flight missions for more than 50 years. He is kind of NASA himself. Here at the Universe Theater, sponsored by Northrop Grumman, guests will enjoy Snoopy and Woodstock as they are called by the launch director, Charlie Blackwell Thompson, to assist with the next, next NASA mission, Artemis. And we have Charlie here. Yeah, she played an important part in November, you know, that big rocket that went up. She made all that happen. That's that young lady, first female flight director of NASA. <laughs> and she's really cool, too. So, from training for the mission to testing the Orion spacecraft to visiting other planets, you'll go on a sensational, out of this world 20 minute adventure full of history, education, and truly imagination. An original score created exclusively for this show, we will showcase an eclectic mix of musical styles. We've updated the theater with new screens, lights, and integrated laser projectors. I can't thank everybody enough to help bring all systems our go here to the visitor complex, including NASA, Mon Love, Penis, and we cannot wait for our guests to see it today. But first, I'd like to introduce Kelvin Manning, Deputy Director of NASA, John Thanks, sir. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Did you know in May of 1969, two months prior to Neil Armstrong first stepping on the moon, and those famous words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Right. There were other words heard from the moon. Snoopy, this is Charlie Brown, over. <laughs> of course, that was the NASA Apollo 10 mission, which was a dress rehearsal for the very first lunar lander. So we had astronauts Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan, who piloted the lunar lander, who was nicknamed Snoopy. Why? Because the mission was to skim the surface of the moon as close as 50,000 feet to snoop around to find the best landing site for Apollo 11. Meanwhile, astronaut John Young orbited the moon in the Apollo command module named Charlie Brown, which was, of course, Snoopy's loyal owner. Needless to say, that wasn't the first time Snoopy worked with NASA, and it certainly wasn't the last time. Snoopy also flew on the Space Shuttle, Space Shuttle Columbia, STS-32, in 1990. And Snoopy's flown aboard the International Space Station several times with multiple expeditions. But here most recently, Snoopy's claim to fame was flying on the Artemis One moon mission. Snoopy was aboard the Hawaiian space capsule and served as the official zero gravity indicator. So when the space capsule reached microgravity, Snoopy floated in the air and the folks with the camera could say, hey, we're in zero G. NASA's relationship with Snoopy has spanned over 50 years. Charles Schultz created his Peanuts comics of Snoopy on the moon, capturing America's excitement for the nation's achievements in space. Already a household name, Snoopy was adopted as NASA's mascot 
to encourage spaceflight safety readiness, foster excitement for human spaceflight missions, and inspire generations to what? To dream big. But perhaps one of Snoopy's most iconic roles is the Astronaut Silver Snoopy Award. First awarded in 1968, 1968, the Silver Snoopy Award is a prestigious honor awarded to both NASA civil servants and contractors by astronauts. Celebrating achievements related to mission success and human spaceflight safety. Each astronaut Silver Snoopy spin pin was flown in space and it's probably one of NASA's most coveted awards because it's only awarded to less than 1% of the entire workforce. So we are delighted for everybody to be here today to celebrate this continuing relationship between NASA and Peanuts and to cooperate the future. I see the, the young folks sitting in the audience to inspire you to study the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math. That's what we're all about, and I'm glad you're here. But now it's my pleasure to introduce NASA's Exploration Ground Systems Launch Director. Darren already gave you a preview. Clipson graduate, Gaffney, South Carolina native, Charlie Michael Thompson. So, thank you very much. Wow, thank you for that very warm welcome and thank you for letting me be a part of your day and, and a part of this event. You know, I think about Snoopy and it takes me back, it's, it's, it's a little personal for me because I remember as a kid in grade school, my mom purchasing me the, the Snoopy figurine, the astronaut Snoopy. And I had that in my room all during grade school. And again, that Apollo generation Snoopy. All through my teen years, college, and into my adulthood. And I still have it today. It's one of my treasured possessions. And it was my connection. Now, I'm not going to give you the year so you can do the math and that kind of thing. But when I grew up, for those young people out here, you're probably thinking, what? There was no internet. <laughs> and so the access to information was really different. And one of my connections as a child and as a youth was through Peanuts and was through Snoopy. And that was my connection to space and exploration. Kelvin talked about the Zero G Snoopy. I got an opportunity when we when we took when we took turnover Snoopy before he was stowed away for the mission, I had the opportunity to be a part of that receiving event. And then after he flew around the moon, I got to bring him back to Fireman One and show him where it all started. So I love my job as the Artemis Launch Director. I get to work with an amazing team. Sometimes the work is hard, sometimes the days are long but it's always worth it. And, uh, and I am honored to have that role. I'm also honored to be a part of this project and to be invited to participate. You know, on November 16th, at 0137 in the morning, our countdown clock was at 10 minutes, 10 minutes for the Artemis One mission, our final hold point before launch. And during that, I gave the go for launch. All systems were go. And we were ready to proceed. Those next 10 minutes, they seemed to take forever. <laughs> but after 10 minutes, at 0147 in the morning, that SLS rocket she roared to life and she announced her presence here on the Space Coast and provided something for the world to see. I want to thank the team that incorporated um, that feeling of launch into this, uh, into this project and into this event. And also for 
Blaming us along through the mission and bringing along a really important part of our audience, the Artemis generation. And I'm looking out here and I'm seeing the Artemis generation. And that is absolutely amazing because it is this generation that will have a sustained presence on the moon. And it is this generation that will leave those iconic blueprints on the surface of Mars. So thank you to, this, uh, to the team that created this. I'm looking forward to seeing it in its uh, entirety. And at this time, I'd like to hand it over uh, to Ella Luis from Moon Love. I'm very happy to be here and very honored. I'm Ella Luisa Lab from Moda CO, and we have created this immersive experience uh, that you're about to see. Uh, it required more than 60 dedicated persons from concept, storytelling, storyboarding, costume, uh, puppet construction, design, video, video mapping, integration, staging, and the training of the performers. So I'm very proud of the team. Um, it also required a close collaboration with NASA so that our scientific fact would be accurate in the storytelling and also with the peanut team so that we would be faithful to the beloved character uh, created by Charles Schultz. Uh, working with two of the most iconic brands is a privilege, but it's also a responsibility. Um, my task was to be faithful to NASA's vision and also to the Peanuts gang, finding the right voice for each character. The talking voices that you're going to hear today are children, children from 7 to 12 years old. So thank you to the Peanuts team for organizing that. All Systems Are Good came to life with the desire to tell NASA's mission in an educational and fun way, to communicate the passion of space exploration and inspire a new generation of children and families, embracing the bold vision of making possible what seems impossible. This adventure was a team effort and when we work together, we can achieve our biggest dreams. I'd like to thank a few amazing people. Terry Prozer for greenlighting the project, uh, allowing flying dog houses. Uh, General Dupree for incredible passion, dedication, love of hearts and theater. Uh, from the Mola team, uh, Martin Lloyd Ferguson, co-creator, our super power team search for part technical director, Eric Jagra, line producer, from the Pinos Worldwide, Craig Herman, for his friendship and complicity for many years. How many years have we developed a project together? Thank you so much, Craig, for being there. Tim Erickson, Jeannie, and Craig Schultz for trusting us with the lovely smoothies. Uh, finally, a very special thanks to Charlie Blackwell Thompson, an example of a real trailblazer. We got to have to Charlie be on this show, so we're back to the Thank you. Official grand opening for all systems are go. So is everyone ready? Yeah. 